Hello YouTube and Preppers, this is the Comms Prepper with a video on an oversight I made when designing my off-grid solar power system. The bluff for bottom line up front is when in absorption mode now, the absorption voltage coming out of the charge controller is now exceeding the maximum voltage of the charge controller. I noticed this when I was looking at the live view over the internet when connecting to my Morningstar TS MPPT60 charge controller and you can see these voltages highlighted in green that on some days instead of what I was expecting to see is 14.7 volts for absorption which is how the units program I see the voltages are going up in value and didn't quite understand why this was happening at first. Now I'm not counting what you see here in red. This is a day that I ran the equalization cycle and that's supposed to increase the voltage to at least 15.48 volts. In this case it went to 15.69 and I couldn't figure it out at first and then I realized what was happening. The temperature compensation in the charge controller was increasing the voltages based on the ambient air temperature of my battery box which is sitting outside. As the days were getting colder the batteries were becoming less efficient so the charge controller was doing what it was supposed to do by increasing the voltage based on the information I plugged into the charge controller from my battery manufacturer. Here's my inverter. I have a not a very expensive inverter I bought from Sears. It's a 1500 watt pure sine wave inverter and when I looked at the manual the inverter says it would accept 11 to 15 volts DC I looked at some competitors in the same class of inverters and found the same thing across most product lines for the entry level or mid tier inverters that they will accept voltages from 11 to 15 volts or 10 to 15 volts. Now for those of you who follow the channel, you're probably familiar with my off-grid system, but for those of you who don't, here's a rough block diagram of my off-grid solar power system. I have a Renogy 150 watt 12 volt solar panel and then I have a Grape Solar 160 watt solar panel connected to my TS MPP T60 charge controller. The other connections to the charge controller of course are the internet which allows me to remotely access the charge controller and check the health of my off-grid solar power system. The typical negative and positive leads that go out and charge the battery box. A voltage compensation sense line that comes from a terminal on the battery back to the charge controller and that's designed to compensate for voltage drop across the charge leads. Let's say the charge controller is putting out 14 volts. There's some resistance in the wire. It might be 13.8 volts getting here. This lead here will pick up that difference, send it back to the charge controller and a charge controller will increase that voltage just a little bit to compensate for the drop in the line. What's impacting my system, my oversight, is the temperature compensation line. My batteries are flooded lead acid batteries which means they produce hydrogen gas so I had to install these batteries in a battery box located outside of the retreat location so that hydrogen gas could safely vent into the atmosphere. What that creates though is a temperature difference between the charge controller which is installed in the retreat and the batteries which are outside under the deck. So the batteries are colder than the charge controller. The temperature sense is designed to specifically correct for this to tell the charge controller what the actual temperature is of the batteries and then adjust the charge voltage in the absorption mode to make sure it accounts for that as the batteries increase and decrease in efficiency based on the ambient temperature. The specifications for programming the charge controller I pulled from Trojan. Uh, this is the actual instruction sheet for the Trojan T105RE and a short little shout out to Yankee 4 who pointed me in the right direction. I was actually originally using the wrong data sheet. I had the data sheet for the Trojan T105 not the T105RE so I had to make some minor adjustments in my programming. But for those of you who do off-grid solar power, make sure you pick a battery where the manufacturer will disclose the charging instructions. There's some battery companies out there that won't tell you what the voltages should be coming out of your charge controller. You should be suspect of that. 
a reputable battery company will provide you the data you need to program a charge controller. In the case of the 105RE, it says right here the absorption charge is based on the cell, 2.35 volts to 2.45 volts, and Trojan counts the cells on the top of the battery. So in this case, it's a 6 volt battery with 3 cells. So when I did my math for programming the charge controller for a 12 volt system, two 6 volt batteries put together in series creates a 12 volt battery bank. So what I did was count the number of cells. One, two, three, four, five, six. I took the numbers from here and multiplied them by six to get the actual settings for the absorption, float, and equalization voltage. And here's the math worked out here. Absorption 14.7, float 13.2, and equalization 15.48 but this is all based on a nice ambient temperature of, of 77 degrees Fahrenheit or 25 degrees Celsius in the instruction sheets from Trojan they also tell you how to compensate for temperature because as batteries get colder they lose efficiency which means they need a greater charge voltage as batteries get warmer they get a little more efficient so they need less voltage to be topped off and that's where the temperature compensation comes into play. And this was the oversight I made when designing my system. I didn't account for the varying voltages of flooded lead acid batteries and the voltages they needed to stay healthy when I selected the inverter. But this is just focusing on the temperature compensation. This is what caused this anomaly or my oversight. The system's working exactly as it's supposed to do. I just picked the wrong inverter. I, I picked a cheaper inverter that wasn't designed to accommodate these varying voltages. So when I program my unit, here's a screenshot from the programming software for the Morningstar charge controller. I went ahead and set this for the absorption voltage of 14.7 volts and down here is where I enter in the temperature compensation. So as the ambient temperature rises and falls at the battery, this comes into play and will adjust the charging voltages going out to the batteries. Here's the ideal settings at 77 degrees. The charge controller will put out the 14.7 volts as programmed in the software. However, as temperature decreases at the battery, the battery loses efficiency, so the charge controller, correctly so, adjusts for that inefficiency and starts to raise the charging voltages. And this is what I didn't anticipate when I designed my system and selected my inverter. The more expensive inverters are actually designed to accept up to 16 volts and can accommodate this temperature compensation swing of flooded lead acid batteries. Conversely, as temperature at the batteries increases, the charge controller will put out less voltage. I didn't have a problem with this because my inverter will go down to 11 volts, but you can see how the temperature compensation has a play in the charging voltages, and I'm seeing more of this as it's getting cooler and we move into winter. So how I compensated for this, and I get the Highlight Morningstar's charge controllers again, I was able to use their software to go in and program a max regulation limit into the system. I checked the box, and I enabled it, and I set it to 14.9 volts. So regardless of the temperature compensation right now, even if it's calling for more voltage, the software will cap it at 14.9 volts and keep those charge voltages within the tolerance of my inverter until I can replace that inverter with a more robust inverter that's designed to accommodate greater swings in voltages based on temperature compensation and different charging environments. However, the downside to this is because I capped this voltage at 14.9 volts, I can't run equalization, which calls for 15.47 volts, without first disabling this, reprogramming the unit, running equalization to allow it to exceed this number, then when the equalization cycle completes, I can re-enable this and reprogram the unit to set the cap again. So this was just a quick video to highlight an oversight that I made, so hopefully when you're designing your systems, you can take this into account that if you're going to use flooded lead acid batteries, first of all, you should make sure you use a battery where the manufacturer will disclose the charging instructions, and the temperature compensation parameters for that. Select a quality charge controller where you can actually program this data into the charge controller. Just don't accept it at face value because you're spending a lot of money on those batteries. And make sure you select a quality inverter that has input voltages that will accommodate for varying voltages coming out of your charge controller based on the ambient temperature of your batteries in your off-grid solar power system. And as always, thank you for watching my videos and subscribing to my channel. 
This has been the Comms Prepper with a brief video on my oversight for my off-grid solar power system.